GT Sport is coming out super soon, as you probably know. It's one of the big games of this year, racing game-wise. But why haven't I covered a lot of it? Well, that's because they haven't really covered a lot of it. I've seen GT Sport at the actual GT Sport event, and I found it a little bit strange that we couldn't capture, but we managed to recall the screens, whatever. So then I've obviously seen it at E3. They had cool little setups. You had the wheel, that sort of thing, and you could race. And then you had a Gamescom where you had the wheel. Basically, it was it was a very simple advertising push for this game so far. I don't know that like, there's a big push coming at the PlayStation conference coming very soon, and if it's going to be like on the PS4 Neo, as that as a big push, that would be my only hope because GT Sport at the moment there isn't a whole lot of information on it, and the information we do get is very like all over the place. For example, we have something telling us that the game's going to have like 150 cars or something, which was like okay, fair enough. They've redone the cars. That's fine, to be fair. And then we, all of a sudden you get this thing coming up where, oh, it might have 500 cars by the end of it. And we're like, what? Really? And then it's like, no, it's have 150. It's just kind of all of, information's all over the place with this game. There isn't a whole solid amount of information. But I wanted to give my thoughts on the game thus far. I've been playing, how it's improved from when it launched, when, when it announced at that special event, and then when I played it at Gamescom. Because I've got to say... It actually played better at Gamescom. I had a quick go at it. The, the guys uh, at the PlayStation booth, the, the Grand Turismo booth, actually recorded a little bit for me. It was, a pre it was pretty fun. I actually played in the new BMW M6, I think it was, the race car. And I obviously had to try that because all the other cars I've pretty much driven on every other game ever. And that car was on the stand. So I was like, well, I need to actually try this car because... I haven't driven it before. Now, I can't massively 100% say how well the game handled because of the fact that I didn't massively play a lot of Gran Turismo 6 with a wheel. I played a little bit here and there, but I mostly played with a controller. And that was my experience with Gran Turismo 6. Whereas GT5, just controller again, a bit of wheel. And I've played pretty much every Gran Turismo, not like religiously, but GT5 was probably my most played one because of the fact that I, that was when I mostly got into gaming and I had YouTube and that sort of thing. But GT Sport, it's really confusing. The game runs well, the game looks good, all this kind of stuff. Again, it has the thing where, let, let's be clear here, the screenshots that you see of Gran Turismo Sport are ha like, have heavy filtering and that sort of thing. It looks really, really, really good. But the actual gameplay toned down a little bit because it runs at 60 frames. There's a picture, it's a still image. It just renders, it processes, you know, it runs at higher textures as it takes that picture and then processes out a better image. But it does look good, don't get me wrong. It's probably one of the best looking racing games there is. But it's not Drive Club. It's not Drive Club. And that a bit annoys me a little bit. I know they're completely different things in the fact that one's a sim, one's arcade, but Drive Club got closed down. Drive Club got closed down. That game sold 2 million copies at least when I last checked, and that was about a year ago when I checked. And they had, then they had the free PlayStation Plus version that didn't include in those original sales. So it's like, that did pretty well. And then GT Sport. It's like the advertising push of this game compared to, uh, to, to the other games. It seems like they just assume it's going to sell. That's my problem. They assume it's going to sell. And when you compare it to the other racing titles coming out, I mean, you've got Assetto Corsa, which was really, it was really well done from what I've played. And then you have GT Sport. It's very much, I don't know. It just, it feels as if they go, you know what? We need something to fill a gap. That's what it feels like. It feels like a, a, a filler game in multiple aspects. I know they've come out and said that it's basically in the middle of a prologue and a full game, but we've not heard any information solid, solidly about it. Just the fact that this is Gran Turismo. It plays like Gran Turismo. It has this many cars. It has this many tracks. I think we've got tracks information. And then you have basically nothing else but that saying it's multiplayer focus. We don't know how the progression properly works. We've got like a lot of information at the GT event. We've got a bit of information saying that, oh yes, we're going to have these different career paths, that sort of thing. But we don't know how the career paths are probably going to work. Do they have currency is still like all over the place? I think it does from looking at menus myself. But still, it's like there's a lot of things that I'm just like, hmm. We haven't really got solid information on that yet, and we're very close to the launch. I'm hoping that we get a lot more information very, very soon. And again, I know it's cash, it's usual Gran Turismo with like doing this sort of stuff, but I don't know. They just seem a bit cocky. Sony in general, I think, are a bit cocky at the moment. But again, the game is good. The game is good. I played it. 
But the problem is getting the Forza feel from this game, the Forza Motorsport feel mostly, in where that they released the game thinking, oh, I, we know it is going to do well because it's got the name. I don't know, it's just a little bit weird. When the trailer came out for Gran Turismo Sport, when we first saw it on the screen, we were like, Okay, this looks this pretty cool trailer, looks very, very beautiful, but it had like screen tearing and that sort of thing on the trailer. And I'm like, okay, you're trying to show that it's like the actual thing, but you have screen tearing. Like, what? GC6 had screen tearing a little bit, but not, not, not like on the trailer. Like, I don't know. It's just... I'm a bit I'm a bit confused about this game. There isn't much to say on it that I played. It plays well. It plays like Gran Turismo. That's probably the main point I should probably bring up. The fact that it does play well. The game plays well. It's fun. I had quite a bit of fun playing it. But again, there's not much else to say other than that it's a Gran Turismo game with a few less cars, more, more race car focused than ever, and we don't really know much about it still. And we're very close to launch, but. That's just my thoughts. Make sure to let me know down in the comments what you think about the Gran Turismo Sport release information, that sort of thing. Are you going to be picking up the game? That's my question. Again, if you're on the PlayStation side, kind of makes sense to pick up Gran Turismo Sport anyway. So I'm assuming that's what they're thinking. Like, oh, they're going to pick it up anyway. That's my problem. If you start to think like that, that's where you go wrong, which is why Forza are starting to... You know, the Forza are starting to listen a little bit. I don't say they're listening, but they're listening to what other games are doing and seeing that those games are doing pretty well and they have competition now, so they're like, damn. Whereas Gran Turismo, their competition's fucking gone. They killed Drive Club. Drive Club's gone. So, I mean, all it has is Drive Club VR and obviously about five people will buy that because not many people have the VR headset. I don't know. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.